very last session at Penn State Web 2013. It gets me a little a little sad, but a little happy because I'm going to Disney on Monday. So anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, done with Penn State Web. What are you gonna do? Go to Disney World. Um, session code M11 for this last and final session. And <coughs> excuse me, I'd like to introduce you to Donna. <coughs> excuse me again, Donna Talarico Bierman, and she's from Elizabethtown College. All right, well, thank you everybody for uh, sticking it out. Last session of the day, last day of the conference, and then of course to everybody at home or at work who's watching on the live stream. Um, so originally I had called this session People Are Talking, but then I realized I could do some neat kind of wordplay and call it People Are Stalking, because the idea <laughs> is how to get users to participate, not just spectate. So I think I kind of made that word up, but it, it rhymes and it kind of sounds, sounds okay. So, so basically, you have a following on social media, but now what? You know, you don't just, we know it's not about the number of likes, the number of followers you have. You wanna get your community to engage with you. So I'm gonna talk about some things that has worked at E-Town on how we turned our stalkers into talkers and um, some lessons that we've learned. And then of course, you know, we're all from all different types of organizations, different size colleges and universities. So hopefully you'll be able to apply some of these things to your own projects when you, when you get home. Um, so before we get started, speaking of stalkers, first I have a confession to make. When I was in high school, I was addicted to calling the radio station to request songs. Okay, anybody here ever call to request a song? Okay, now anybody call to request a song in the last year? Okay, call, uh, college radio. <laughs> So, um, but, um, so my radio stalkerness actually, coincidentally, I won my high school a rock concert my senior year. It wasn't any, anybody big, it was just a, you know, new act. And that led to my first career, which was in radio promotions. So, I um, recognized the connection between radio and social media a couple years ago. I mean, there is such... A, Radio really is like social media, and I'm gonna write a blog post about it one day. I've been saying that for two years. I still haven't written about it, but I just wanted to at least share this little tidbit. Um, so I think, you know, um, when you tweet to a student or you retweet something and you see them favorite it or retweet it or say, hey, Elizabethtown College just tweeted me, that is the new radio shout out. This is for my aunt. She, she wasn't even looking when I showed the animated, <laughs> animated GIF. So this is what happened when the DJ said, and this is going out to Donna in Blakesley, Pennsylvania. Well, the same thing kind of happens now when I see, um, you know, Dunkin' Donuts tweet me back. So the radio connection is kind of there, but radio is kind of all about community, so that's how we can um, think about this. So there are a couple things that you can do to um, get your audience to participate and not just spectate. So the first thing you can do is accept them. And I mean literally accept them because we're colleges, we have to accept students to join our community. So um, anybody else here like a really tangible fan, even though we're all techie people, I mean, I'm still touchy-feely. So uh, two years ago, our creative director redesigned our acceptance letter into a whole package. So Steve Jobs, whether you love him or hate him, he had a great thing about packaging. You know, if somebody buys something that they really want, when they open it up, that's an emotional experience. So we wanted our prospective students to have that. So instead of just giving a letter, they got this packet that said the moment of truth, and then they open it up. Their acceptance letter would be right here, and then you kind of open it up, pretty campus shot, next steps. And then here was um, the de declaration of intent. And then it says, congratulations, your moment is now. We are proud, honored, and excited to offer you admission to Elizabethtown College. But right here in the middle, now we want them to share that moment. At that moment when they're most engaged and they're most happy, we tell them to join our accepted students Facebook group and to, to tweet about it. And then use the hashtag eTown2017 because that's the incoming class year. So that was kind of the print version that we did to draw people online. And then we started to see, um, oops, I forgot about this slide. Um, this is what we started to see. 
you know, so people weren't just tweeting examples that they got accepted. They were making collages to show all the parts of the package that we put together. And I just, I love that smiley face. It's just great. I can't wait to meet her when she comes on campus. See, I'm, I'm a stalker. I'm going to be looking for that girl. <laughs> oh, sure. So um, this is the stat that I just um, clicked over, but 82% of accepted students do want to interact. And that was from a recent uh, Chronicle article. So throughout the year, you know, we're starting to see people tweet that they got accepted. Um, you know, they can't wait to actually visit campus, things like that. Um, so this involvement helps with your yield. You know, you're talking to the students. When they tweet that they get accepted, we retweet that. We say, congratulations, we'll see you in the fall. Oops, we mean summer. We'll see you at summer orientation, those kind of things. Um, so we start accepting students in the fall, and then we just keep seeing momentum for this, this hashtag. Um, so 176 students shared their moment on Twitter or Instagram that we could find. Some people still are, um, you know, have private accounts, but that's what we could find. And, um, you know, people are still, are still using it. And then this one, this one really gave me the warm and fuzzies. It says, I feel like I know a nice amount of kids from E-Town 27 at this point, and I feel that making friends won't be too hard. So you think about it, you know, a lot of us have been tweeting about this conference, during this conference, about other conferences and making connections with people that we haven't met yet in person. And then we meet them, IRL, um, at, at conferences in real life, and we get excited. So there's no reason that these prospective students can't have those same feelings that we do, that we get at conferences when we're on Twitter. So the next thing that you can do to get your audience to participate, not just spectate, is to welcome them. Welcome them to campus. So every, every fall, um, well, just for the past two years, I haven't been in E-Town that long. When I say every, it makes it sound like forever. But um, you can welcome the students back. So this is our Facebook cover photo that we had from last year. And we had our you know, college Twitter account and then the E-Town move-in hashtag. So people are moving into college for the first time or they're moving back because they're a returning student. So we didn't want to alienate the returning students because it's still kind of cool to come back and you have you know a new bedspread and new posters and it's just as exciting every year so um, we use that hashtag and you know lots of the, the goodbye pictures and I couldn't use a huggy one because when I see parents say goodbye to their kids I start to cry a little bit so I tried to use a, a funny one and then piles of stuff and um, there were tweets from professors and all sorts of things so a lot of people were talking about <laughs> E-Town moving and then um, I think we talked in some other sessions about, you know, you try and target your audience. So for move-in, that was really current students, but the whole world can see what, what you're tweeting. So um, the community kind of joined in too. So these are just two local community members and an, an alum that said they're doing a great job with, with move-in. So that was kind of validation for me, but just kind of neat that people notice what we do. So the next thing you can do to get people to participate is tag them. Literally, not like freeze tag or TV tag or anything like that, which those are kind of fun games. But um, at homecoming this year, I can't take credit for this idea because I was actually at a conference and when I got back, our creative director, the same genius who made this, said, I came up with a social media idea for you, you know, and I'm like, oh, let's hear it. So she says, let's make stickers that say, I've been tagged, and walk around at homecoming and, and tag people. And then we handed them a flyer well, a little flyer that said, tag, you're it. It's your turn to tag us. And we put all the social media networks on there and said to um, you know, share your pictures, your thoughts, and everything like that. So it was a lot of fun. Um, we have a social media street team at E-Town. And so it was me and, and those five uh, cool guys and girls. And uh, we went around in teams of two and, and tagged people. And, um, and then we collected just a whole bunch of people that um, you know, tweeted and then they used the hashtag that we wanted because we just asked them, we told them this is what you should share. Now, if any of you have seen me pr present before about social media, I shared a picture of Linda and she was our lunch lady and she retired. So on the day she retired, we posted a picture and it got more likes than any picture we ever had. So when I saw her at homecoming, I ran up and I'm like, Linda, I have to tag you so I can put your picture on Facebook again. So, um, so it's kind of neat to show those kind of faces that people love. Um, so
So the tag year it was a social success. Um, these are just some of the stats that we had. You know, we had 92 photos tagged, 505 or 515 tweets actually used the homecoming. Not everybody was posting pictures, but we had a lot of conversation that day. It was, it was just really great, and we grew our, grew our audience a little bit during that day. So that was the tag year it. So um, now you can also ask people to participate, and I think this is a lot of what Mayans uh, and Rob's presentation was just before this about getting the community to send you stuff and getting user-generated content. So that is just, um, I should just insert their presentation here for the next few slides. <laughs> um, but a couple of the things that we did, um, love. So we, um, a couple years ago, we didn't do it this year because I didn't want to make it like an annual thing, but um, a lot of people fall in love in college. A lot of people make bad mis love, love choices in college, but you know, sometimes we meet the person that we're going to marry in college. Um, I actually did, sidebar, but I, we didn't realize we liked each other until we didn't see each other for 15 years, and we've been inseparable ever, si ever since. So, um, but we asked people to share their pictures through email, and then on Valentine's Day, we posted an album, and then a lot of people went in and said, oh, you grew up, oh, wow, you have kids now, or I can't believe you're a grandma already. So there was just you know, a lot of fun things that were shared in that Facebook album. Another thing that we've done, we've done two of these so far. Um, we did Instagram photo challenges. But we also said you can do it on Twitter too if you don't have Instagram yet. Um, so the first one we did was in the fall of 2012. So we thought that that would be a nice way to welcome students back to campus to get the new students to explore campus a little more. So that was called the 31st, 31st days of the semester, which was kind of weird because the move-in day was like the, uh, the 19th. So I had to constantly look at a calendar because I couldn't figure out in my head and do the math of what day it was. So the next time we did it, we just started on the first of the month. It was just much easier. Um, so we promoted this through twi Twitter, Instagram, Twinstagram, I almost I made up my own social network there, um, and Facebook. <laughs> And um, so it was a lot of success. Um, more than double the students participated in this one. They actually asked for a second one. They said, oh, are you going to do that photo challenge thing again? I'm like, well, if you're going to ask and do it, sure. Um, so we had more than 1,200 photos tagged, 93 different participants. And the personality of these photos, they really told the E-Town story. Um, there's a link at the bottom here that um, you can look at the Storify from it um, once the slides are posted. But there was just a lot of fun pictures. And um, I posted a couple quirky pictures. And then one of the days on, on Valentine's Day was, what do I love about E-Town? And somebody retweeted something, or I mean, Instagrammed something that I said and said a sense of humor. So I'm like, oh, they, they like that you know, you're doing funny things. So just remember, you don't always have to be serious just because we work at colleges and universities. Um, so funny sidebar, of course it was February, so one of the challenges was a picture of a president. So we had people taking pictures of coins, of dollar bills, of their roommate who's president of the campus sewing club. But it just so happened that the president of the college walked into my office on that day and I said, Carl, can I take your picture for this Instagram photo challenge? See, we're having this you know, 28 day photo challenge and today it's, and he's like, okay. So he posed with the thing and I just thought that was pretty funny. Um, and then you can see our Instagram growth. I mean, it just shot up. I mean, it was growing pretty well, but after the photo challenge and people, I mean, you could see here it was kind of steady, 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 and then just boom. So Instagram is really our fastest growing um, social media. So we know that people like to take photos and they like to look at photos. Um, bloom. So this is something that we, we did. Um, I've seen some other companies and colleges change out Facebook photo cover, cover photos for student generated photos. So we did that this spring. Again, we know that people love pictures of food and love the weather and anything that's pretty on campus. You know, we have a lot of pretty trees. So these are just a few of the student picked pictures. Unfortunately, this is one of the most prettiest trees on, or one of the prettiest trees on campus, but the leaves all fall off like in a day or two. So then it doesn't stay pretty very long. But we've captured it in photo so it can live on. Um, and then recurring features. This is probably the little um, radio promotion person in me. I like to think of in, in phone bits and little promotions. But um, we have a couple recurring features. 
And they're not big things like photo challenges or lovebirds, but they're just regular things that you can do that give your users something to look forward to. So they can kind of go back to your page on a Wednesday because they know that it's We Ask Wednesday and there might be a cool question that I could answer or a heated debate to get into. Um, I don't do it every single Wednesday, um, you know, if there's other things on campus that are happening. Um, Throwback Thursday, I'll talk about that in another slide. Um, and then the scene on campus, um, you know, if, if you're like me, you're always walking around campus, even if you're just running an errand or getting lunch, you, you carry your phone with you. So I would see neat things happening on campus, like they do, and just take a picture. So I started to call it scene on campus. Well, later that day, I got an email, and I know this is being live streamed, so I won't say who you are, person who sent me this email. Um, <laughs> like, it was like a, Psst, you spelled scene wrong. And, you know, that person didn't get that I was just trying to be playful, like it was a noun, it was a scene on campus, but, you know, I like wordplay. So then I started to put it in quotes for a little while, but I think people are just used to it now. Um, but it works really well. And people sometimes will email me and say, hey, we're having um, these therapy dogs coming to the library during finals week. I think that would make a nice scene on campus. So it's neat to kind of get people from outside your area that, that they know about that. Um, another way to get people to participate is to celebrate. And if you can, in real time, um, live streaming. Um, Miss live streaming herself, Lori Packer is here. Um, she did a great session on live streaming to kick off the conference. Um, so we've been live streaming a couple years, but we've got really into the social media side of it um, just in the past two years. So we promote um, the hashtag on our, again, this was a Facebook cover photo. And then we promoted the live stream down here on the big graphic areas on our website, on, our, on the homepage on the different student, student gateway pages and on the live streaming page. So just to let people know well in advance that you can tell people um, that it's going to be live streamed and you can participate in the conversation. Um, so a really cool thing happened. Um, our commencement speaker this year was Ibu Patel. I don't know if anybody has heard of him, um, but he stopped me in the hallway to ask where someone was and I said, hey, you were tweeting that you were coming to E-Town College and you're the first college speaker or graduation speaker I've met here that has ever been on Twitter. And he's like, oh, well, yeah, you're live streaming this, right? And I said, yeah. He goes, well, I'm going to tweet that to my followers so they could watch it. So we just kind of had this nice little bonding moment. And then our president came over and he's like, oh, what are you guys doing? So it was nice. Um, and then this was just a little social media command center for the day. Um, it's always nice to have a program with you so you can say who's talking. Yeah. They didn't give me a program for the baccalaureate, and I didn't think to ask for one. So I was kind of struggling, and I was saying, a, a girl is up next, because I didn't know what to say. And I didn't want to make guesses. Well, she looks like a Jessica, but I, I didn't want to do that. So always have the, the program with you. Um, so how we promoted the hashtag, we, of course, promoted it on, on the Facebook cover photo, Twitter updates, Facebook posts, the college website on the live stream page, in the printed program. So it's great that we're a real small shop that I, I could just go to Wendy's office and say, hey, on this page of the program, can you just slip in the hashtag? And then in the proofing process, if somebody says, why is that there? Then maybe we'll think about it. But people are like, OK, it can stay. This is in the part, basically, where it tells you to silence your cell phones. And then this is where you can go to buy the pictures. Um, we also, we didn't do this last year, but this year we hung up posters, flyers, all around campus. And now that I'm pointing at this, I don't know if they actually went down and took them down, but that's OK. I don't know if there's a rule that if you have to take down your own signs. But we got about 300 uses of the graduation hashtag and about 193 mentions. So it was pretty success successful. Um, we also did something really cool. We trended. <laughs> We trended last year, and we were just kind of joking about it, like internally. And the one guy in my office said, do you think we're going to trend this year in Harrisburg? And I said, I don't know. But we did. And, but it's funny, because the students, they liked it. They're like, wow, we're trending. Our graduation is trending. And they were saying that we were trending worldwide. Now, I, I knew that it was just Harrisburg, the Harrisburg area, but I, I didn't say anything. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to burst their bubble on their graduation day. 
Oh, and then we also have Elizabethtown High School. So some of the high school kids are like, why is our high school tweeting or trending? And so somebody said, it's us, it's the college kids. So that was just a neat little thing that happened over the trending. Um, and then you can see here the, um, some alums were watching, um, recent alums. So they still had friends that were graduating. So they just sent in some pictures of them watching it, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so another way to get people to participate and not just spectate is to remember. Um, anytime you're with a group of new people, maybe you're starting a new job and you're having lunch with your coworkers for the first time, or you always search for that common ground. For me, it always ends up being 80s movies. Oh, did you like the Goonies? Oh, me too. So people like to remember things together. It kind of, that nostalgia really helps, you know, bring together strangers. So, um, and especially for E-Town, we have a lot of alums that, are, that follow us and interact with us on Twitter. So again, I've used this in a few of my presentations, but there are lots of new faces here, so I hope there's some new stories. But at E-Town, we, um, carrot cake is our tradition, so much so that I felt like I'd be cheating on my job if I had the carrot cake that was at lunch today. So, <laughs> um, but, so one day over the summer, I just tweeted that um, a picture of carrot cake, and I said, oh, I bet everybody who's home for summer vacation is really missing this carrot cake. Well, little did I know that somebody would miss it so much that they would drive back to campus to, get a, to buy a whole pie, um, or a whole cake. So she was an alum, and this whole conversation started. And I wrote a whole blog post about it that, um, that you can see up there. But so it brought somebody physically back to campus. And then she walked around campus and talked to some other professors. And, and she, she didn't come very far. She came maybe about 30, 40 minutes or so. But it was just neat to see that a picture of a cake led to, led to that. And a $6.99 purchase at the college lunch, lunch stand. <laughs> um, so sometimes you don't have to create ideas from scratch. There are these things, kind of like the Instagram photo challenge. I kind of rode the wave of seeing people participating in that. So now the new thing is hashtag TBT, or Throwback Thursday. So we, um, all of our yearbooks are digi digitized now, and the library also is digitizing their, um, our photo photography collection. So I have access to some really great collections, like this 1909 dorm room. It's really not much, except for the clothes and maybe like the footboard. But there's a wall of photos. There's school spirit. There's you know, a tennis racket. So um, you know, I asked people. What do you, you know, what stands out for you in this photo? Now you have to be prepared for those snarky remarks like, well, I bet they didn't fix that ceiling up there yet. It looks like it's dripping. <laughs> 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 but they didn't know what dorm it was, so they actually did fix that because the dorm's not there anymore. But it's just kind of funny to see that banter. But it doesn't matter what they're talking about. They're talking and it's, it's fun and it's not really, harmful to our facilities department if somebody makes a little joke about a picture from 1909 about the roof being and stuff. Um, and this is a more recent one. I posted this yesterday, and I posted it in honor of, since I was going to be here on Throwback Thursday, I posted a picture of our data center. I'm not sure what year this was in, but I had asked people, you know, to get the conversation going, where do you think this is on campus? So there was a heated debate. It's in Nycarry Hall. No, it's in Zug. No, it's here. And so it was just kind of neat. And some woman actually said that it was in um, Nycarry because it's where she used to work when she worked at the college. Well, she had the wrong answer, <laughs> so she didn't really remember her surroundings too much. <laughs> so throwback Thursday or just other things to remind people of traditions, that'll get them talking. Okay, so the examples that I used up until now were really for your external users, for your prospective students, your current students, alumni, faculty and staff, you know, how people that interact with you can, um, can interact with you. Um, so be, you can also get people to participate and not just spectate by empowering your internal users. So you want to give the content creators on campus, your web users on campus, some tools to use to help them share and then get their, their uh, people under them to share. So you want to share knowledge. And a few of the things that we do in the Office of Marketing and Communications at E-Town is um, we try and have lots of support. Number one, if we make really good resources online that people can access at any time, it kind of cuts down on the customer service. You know, how do I upload a PDF? How do I, how do, I do this? I probably shouldn't have said PDF because I think that's a sensitive topic at this particular conference today. <laughs> um, 
But so first, and I must have clicked on that link before because it's orange, it's hard to see, but it says guide to social media. So in addition to have, having a web style guide, a graphic identity guide, we created a social media guide. So it's not necessarily rules, but it's best practices that people can, can go on there, figure out if they even should have a Facebook page, you know, because we don't want to dilute our audience. But if they choose to, you know, we can't necessarily say you can't ever have one, so we have the sources there for them. We also offer content management system training, and I'll show you how that relates to social media in just a, just a second, um, because the CMS we use has some social features. Um, we provide content writing workshops. This is something that I want to start doing more often um, at employee orientation. So we can't go through the whole college and teach everybody the, the right way to, to do something. It take, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, is that how it goes? But I thought, well, what if we can get to the new dogs? So um, me and a colleague, Dan, we got um, HR to let us on the employee orientation agenda. So we have 15 minutes at the new employee orientation to talk about web and social media and internal communication and all the things that we wish everybody on campus would know. And then we thought that, that these new people will be excited about it and can kind of infiltrate their departments and, and really get people on the same page. Um, cues and reminders before big campus events. So some of the graphics you saw were um, just changing cover photos for Facebook and images on our website to promote the hashtags to get people to use them. But um, that's kind of just throwing it spaghetti on a wall and see what sticks. So I also like to reach out to specific people, you know, specific staff members or specific faculty members that I know are active tweeters and say, hey, just a reminder, we did awesome last year with E-Town 2012. You know, let's really kick it up a notch for 2013. Um, so I try and personally go out there and ask people to participate. And going along with that, find your allies and ambassadors. So I have the social media street team, which we call the E-team, um, but then they have their friends. And so it kind of, you know, I get the student area covered with that. Um, so what we're starting to see is that some of our um, other college-related Facebook pages are starting to look better. They're listening. They're reading our guides. They're reading the blog that I had, they're asking questions, which is great. They're not just going out there and trying to figure it out for themselves. So um, Stacy, who does our Call to Lead program, she's starting to actually design graphics for each of these because she can do that. So she's personalizing her page, using the right size pictures. So I think we're gonna start to see more of that. Um, so people in our library is also doing a really great, great job. So this is just, so if their pages look better and they're doing better, then their users are gonna be enjoying the experience a little more. Um, so these are just some sharing tools and definitely you wanna have calls to action in everything you're doing. You know, the same as on a website, you know, we were, we were talking about bounce rates in one of the sessions earlier. Well, they're, they're bouncing because they're, they're not being told to do anything else. So same with social media. Um, Ask a question, ask for content, you know, whether it's post your picture, tag, tag yourself in this. Um, encourage action. You know, you see a lot of these posts that are like this or, or share it. So on election day, I said, um, you know, oh, today's election day, like this status if you voted. And I got like hundreds of likes. I don't know if they actually voted or not, but it got, you know, people interacting. Um, and then of course, hashtag promotion, which I kind of already talked about. Um, so. I know that there's a lot of different CMSs out there, but luckily um, we picked one that allows you to integrate your social media accounts. So what this is really great for is if you want to promote a specific web page, especially if it's a new page or one that you're making updates to on social media, you can do so with um, you know, the push of basically one button. So here um, in the setup area, you can set up your uh, Facebook account and your Twitter account. And you could put multiple ones in there, but right now we just have the main college accounts because I was afraid of what might happen if I tied everybody's Facebook page in into here. So I wanted to kind of use it for a year for myself. But that's for my aunt again. She's looking down and she didn't see my dancing carrot. But what I'm going to use this for is the carrot. Like, I don't have control over everybody's social media page, but we have a social media directory site, and if they're not doing anything, I take them off of that. But if they're doing a good job, I'll say, well, I'll put you back on the social media director, or directory, 
or I'll add, I'll add it into your website thing so you can use it. So that's my little carrot that I want to give them. But how it works is when I create a new page, you push this big green, oops, I pushed the wrong button. Um, and this is OU Campus by Omni Update. Does anybody here use OU Campus? Oh, okay. So they have um, a really cool, it's very, we call it the Fisher Price of CMSs because it's so user friendly. So if you have a distributed authorship where lots of people are using it, this is great because the publish button is this, it's big. <laughs> it's a big publish button. Um, but when you publish that, then you get to the confirmation screen and it will ask you, do you want to share it on Twitter? Twitter? Do you want to share it on Facebook? So you can type your tweet, you can type your Facebook post that gives you a character count mm -hmm. and it lets you use a, a URL. So once you have published the page, it goes out there to the internets for everybody to see, but then it also goes onto your Facebook page. Now, this won't work for everything. If you notice there's a typo on a page and then you go back and publish it, you're not gonna say, hey, check out this new page. It has um, a comma removed. That's not exciting. Yeah. So, but this is really great if you're creating a page for a new event or maybe um, you have an updated faculty bio page because new people joined your department. So boom, you can publish it and it can be shared to your social networks in the click of a button. Um, other things that we do to promote and encourage sharing is, this is um, ripped out of our left navigation, like so underneath our main menu, we have these little content blocks. And uh, we worked with M. Stoner and Omni Update for our redesign. And we have these things, they're called spiffs. But I don't know if that's, that's just kind of what they call them, but the widgets or whatever. So we have a social media one, and that way people can interact with um, the college. What's that? Oh. Sorry, everybody at home. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so this is, um, you know, it's, we have our social media stuff in the footer of the college website like most places do, but sometimes we want to elevate it a little more on pages that we know get a lot of traffic. So what's really cool about the CMS and how M. Stoner kind of set this up for us is that we have, um, it can be globally, so it can be in the whole academics folder or the whole business department website. Or maybe we just want to have it on the orientations page, not just admissions. Um, so again, another carrot is that we'll put this on the math department site or the history department site specific to their social media if they're kind of following those rules and, and doing the right thing. So we have three versions of it, one with both, one with just Twitter, one with just Facebook. So those are just some ways that we use our CMS to help promote social media. And we also um, have CMS integration, I'm sorry, uh, social media integration into our campus calendar. So everybody's college here probably has lots of events. If you're like us, two years ago they were on a big static page that you had to scroll through and somebody actually had to go in and delete the event, you know, backspacing, and it was just a cluster F. I forgot, I'm live streaming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we have this great new <laughs> calendar system. Um, so before they had to schedule something in the room system. Then they send an email to the person who handles our campus news. Then they might send that content somewhere else. Well now, and there's still a learning curve for people on our campus, but now they can schedule their room, add a picture, add links, add the whole marketing bit, and just it shows up on the calendar automatically so they don't have to do any extra work. But when we, um, and my department had a role in this, but we didn't actually pick this system, but you can, share on Twitter, you can do all these other things, forward to friends, but what I like, aside from the Twitter, is that you can have a conversation about the event right here. Oh, hey, are you going to this event? And you can tag people, um, and you can send it to Facebook or, or not, like it can just be specific to this page. So this is something we're working on. We wanna get more people talking about events, so I think by promoting this tool a, a little more, we'll, we'll um, do better. Um, so the results, so, um, you know, this is my almost third year at E-Town, and this academic year we really did a lot more things, really pushed the social media stuff harder, and we saw some really great results. So I'll share some of those with you. Um, we grew our Facebook uh, fan base, or likes as they're called today, by 1,300 fans. Twitter, we nearly doubled our Twitter following, so we added 747, a whole airplane size. Um, 
that was kind of corny. <laughs> I heard crickets. <laughs> um, our average post reaches almost 2,000 people, 1,900 people, and on average, about 26 people interact with that post, whether it's liking, commenting, or sharing it. So, so that's pretty good for us, you know, given that we're, we're a smaller campus. Um, I got this stat here from Sprout Social, and um, I had a 30-day trial period, so I tried to get everything I possibly could out of that trial period, and we're going to go with it when the new fiscal year starts. But, so we found out that we're doing really well on Twitter because we have 53% conversation, 49% updates. So it's showing that you know, we're not just broadcasting things. We're, we're talking to people. Um, and then, so as we all know, you know, social media is great, it builds community, but ultimately, what is the goal of social media for, for a college? You know, are we trying to get more students? Are we trying to get more donations? What are we trying to do? So, you know, of course there's those funny things and promotional type things that you do, but ultimately in a lot of cases, you want them to do something. So, and where do they do that? Your college website. So as we're getting people more engaged, we're getting more people on our website. And so that's kind of a hidden bonus there. So we learned that um, the average time on site from people that come to our website from Twitter or Facebook is six minutes and 17 seconds. So that increased 126% from last year. And um, I forgot to get the statistic for like regular sources, but I think it's around three minutes. So people that come to us from social media are staying longer. They're engaged with us on social media, but they're engaged with us on, on our website as well. Um, repeat visitors went up, um, both on Twitter and Facebook. That number for Twitter is what, huge, but I think it's just because our following also grew really big. Um, and then mobile traffic from Facebook is up 256%. That's really telling because we know that people are accessing Facebook from their mobile phones. So that also reminds us, and my presentation isn't about web and responsive design and all that, but this validates you know, so much of what else we've learned at the conference in those other session, sessions that people have done. You know, mobile really matters. Um, and Twitter referrals are up 381%. So a lot more traffic is coming from Twitter. And um, that probably hasn't in part to we're, we're doing better things and more interactive things, but you know, and then we also have a greater number of followers. So, what we're learning is that our social audience is loyal and it's growing. You know, we're getting more social followers and we're getting better interaction and engagement on our website. So that's kind of a nice way to tie in the web and social media together. So I think we're good on time. So I think that's it. Do you guys have any questions, comments, anything that you want to share that worked for you? Yes. This year we tried um, doing a live stream announcement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which automatically puts commencement up on YouTube as it's happening. It's really cool. Okay. Yeah, for those at home that you couldn't hear the gentleman in the audience, uh, and in addition to live streaming commencement, they also did a Google Hangout live. So that was another, um, another way to get traction from a live event. Yeah, I'd like to get into doing some Google Hangouts too. I've heard some other stories from other presentations, presenters here that it worked pretty well. Anyone else? Okay. That's a great question. I, I usually give that little spiel in the beginning, but I forgot. I was so excited about like putting my tags and stuff up here. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> um, so the question was, how is social media handled at the college, like um, org chart wise? So, at the Office of Marketing and Communications, we're a team of six people, and it's pretty much just me that handles social media for the official college accounts. Um, Flickr and YouTube are handled by our digital design manager who we, we share an office. Um, so we pretty much just monitor and control the official accounts. We do work closely with um, admissions and alumni and development to get content from them to share on the main college website because we really try and discourage people from starting you know, a Facebook page for this annual giving campaign or a Facebook page for the, like, we, we, we try and discourage that. So to do that, we offer, you know, you can do it here where we have almost 7,000 people that will see it. Um, 
but there are people on campus that do want to start their own Facebook page, so we try and prepare them, give them the tools, and just kind of follow up and make sure that they're doing it right. Did that answer your question? Okay. Anyone else? All right, well, the conference is over. <laughs> Thank